This lab has multiple endpoints that issue a server-level redirect and are vulnerable to a pause-based request smuggling attack because of the version of Apache that they're using. So first, let's switch to Burp and find those server-level redirect endpoints. I'm going to go to proxy and HTTP history. And you can see there are a few files here, static files that are within the resources folder. So you can pick any of them and send it to repeater and then switch to repeater. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the inspector window on the right and downgrade the HTTP protocol to HTTP 1.1. And then just send a request just to make sure that that works. And then the interesting behavior here is that, and that's something we've seen in previous labs as well, if you just select the folder level with the um, terminating slash, you get a 404 not found. But if you leave out a terminating slash, the server issues a 302 redirect to the same URI path that you requested, but with the terminating slash appended. So if you change that into a post request and then issue the request again, we can see that we still get a 302 found. So this endpoint also accepts post requests. Now, the difference with previous labs is that we need to use a pause-based request smuggling approach. And for that, we need to use Turbo Intruder. So I'm going to right-click on the request and go to Extensions, Turbo Intruder, and send this request to Turbo Intruder. Now, it doesn't matter what the request is, because I'm going to do everything from the Turbo Intruder code here. And I'm going to share. So I find it a bit easier to work in an IDE for this because this is just Python code. And I'm going to share all the code that you see here with you in a paste bin attachment that I'll attach to the video just so it's easier for you to refer to. But if I switch to VS Code, then you can see at the top here, we have an engine that we're defining. That's just a collection of settings that we'll use to send our HTTP requests within. It's really important that you set the concurrent connection count to 1 and that you set pipelining to false. Request per connection, I think the default is 100, so I've just defined 100 as well. That's a bit large, but you can leave it as such. Now, to detect and confirm the CL0 pause-based uh, request smuggling vulnerability, we're going to use the same differential responses approach. So we're going to define an attack request, which is just the post request to that uh, server-level redirect endpoint that we found, with a real host header, a content type, now, it's also important we set the connection to keep alive, just so that the TCP connection is, is kept open. And then we define a real content length. Now, the content length here, you see this is in Turbo Intruder, is a variable that we'll switch in later or replace later. And I did the same here for the request body. So this is also a variable which will contain the smuggled request. So this will be the content, the content length of the smuggled request, and this will be the smuggled request itself. Now, for the Differential response approach refers to a GET request for a resource that doesn't exist using a real host header. And we'll follow up that smuggled request or that attack request that contains a smuggled request with a normal request, where the normal request is just a GET request for the front page, simple GET request using a real host header. And you can see here, we are using the engine to queue or to add our requests that we want to send. So first, we're attaching the attack request. Um, the two variables it includes is the length of the smuggled request, which is the content length, and the smuggled request itself. So that will be the length of the smuggled request here, and then the smuggled request itself here. We also set a pause marker because we want Turbo Intruder to stop sending bytes to the front end server after the content length. And there's a carriage return line feed here, a carriage return line feed here. So we want it to pause for 61 seconds after the double carriage return line feed, followed by the smuggled GET request. So that's why I've defined a double carriage return line feed here, followed by the GET request. And then the pause time is just in milliseconds, so this is 61 seconds. So after we send the attack request entirely, then we send the normal request. And that is essentially the same thing that we did in previous labs, where we used Burp itself to send a attack request followed by a normal request. But now we're just using Turbo Intruder to do the same thing, because it allows us to pause after sending a partial request. So I'm just going to select everything here, and then switch to Burp and go to Turbo Intruder. And I'm just going to paste what I copied before from VS Code, and then launch the attack. And it'll take 61 seconds now before we can see the results. So I'll likely speed this up. And we just have a few seconds left now. 60 seconds, 61. And we have our two requests. So we have our 302 to our attack request as a response. But then for our get request for the front page, we get a 404 not found. So this true using a differential responses method we've used in previous labs, we've confirmed that the CL.0 pause-based request smuggling vulnerability exists within this endpoint. 
and that we can now try and exploit it. So let's see how we can do that in VS Code. So I'm gonna go to the smuggled request here. Now, instead of the uh, get request for something that doesn't exist, let's try and change that into a get request for the admin page. Now it's important to note any endpoint or any URI path that you request, make sure you add a terminating slash in this lab because the backend server for this lab uh, issues a 302 redirect for any path you request without a terminating slash at the end. And that just makes things take longer because you have to wait 60 seconds every time before you can uh, see the result of a new test. So I'm just skipping ahead here and uh, already adding in the terminating slash. But that's all we need to do for this because our attack request remains the same, our normal request remains the same, and our pause marker hasn't changed. So we can just copy all of this and then switch back to Turbo Intruder and we click Halt here and then Configure. I'm just gonna paste the new code, which will be a get request for the admin page and then click Attack. And again, we have to wait. You see the duration here, two seconds, three seconds. We have to wait another 61 seconds before we can see the next result. So I'll uh, speed this up. So a few seconds left now, 60 seconds, 61, and we can see our 302 redirect. And then this is interesting, we see a status code 401 unauthorized. If I render the page, you can see admin interface only available to local users. That differs uh, from if we just select admin like this, we get path slash admin is blocked. And I'm pretty sure this is a 403 response code as well. So that kind of confirms that we were able to successfully smuggle our requests past the front end server and that this is a request that we receive from the backend server. Now, we've seen this before, admin interface only available to local users. It means that we need to add a request header host for a value of localhost. So let's switch to VS Code and then go to the get slash admin here. And instead of the host header or the real host header that we've defined here, let's just set a host header of localhost and then save and copy everything again and switch back to burp and then click halt, configure and just paste our new code that contains the host uh, for a value of localhost and click attack. And again, we see the duration here, two seconds, three seconds. So we have to wait another 60 seconds and I'll speed this up. Just a few seconds left now, so 61 seconds. And we can see the 302 response to our attack request. And then we can see a 200 okay if I render the page you can see that we have a form now where we can enter a username and then a delete user button. So let's see what that looks like in code. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger and go down. So we have a form here. We have a CSRF token, which will be important. And we also have a username value. So request body parameter username, request body parameter CSRF. And we have a session token because the session token is linked to the CSRF token. So those three are the session token, the CSRF token, and then the username. That's three values that we'll have to enter in, uh, in Turbo Intruder. So I'm gonna to switch to VS Code. Now for the smuggled request, I'm gonna comment out the smuggled get request here, and I'm gonna uncomment the smuggled post request because that's what we'll be using. Um, so the first thing we do here, we see is the URI path. If we go back to Burp, to Burp Intruder um, or Turbo Intruder, we can see if we go down, the path is slash admin slash delete. But again, we add a terminating slash as well. Otherwise, we get a 302 redirect. It's a post request. And we also want this session cookie here. So let me copy that and then switch back to VS Code and select everything up to the end and paste that. There we go. We keep the host for a value of localhost, but we have to replace the CSRF token. So I'm going to go back here and go down and copy the CSRF token. And then paste the new one. And then the username, because you can see the field name is username. And the user we want to delete is Carlos. So we can leave Carlos. The only thing I want to check, so I'm going to copy everything until the end of the line. And then let's clear this echo minus n. And then let's get a character count. So this is 53 bytes in length. That is what I had set it to, so we can leave it as is. And then the normal request will remain unchanged, but here in the pause marker, you can see that we will have two carriage return line feeds because we have a carriage return line feed here, one here and one here. But then in our smuggled request, we'll have a double carriage return line feed as well. And this will be a post request. So we wanna make sure that we modify this 
I know that the lab itself or the lab solution is using the content length uh, before, but then you have to edit it to be the real content length in the in the pause marker. I found it easier to just add the fact that we're using a post request now after because the um, post request is here is a smuggled request, and that makes it a bit easier. You don't have to play around with the actual content the actual real content length within the pause marker itself. So I'm just going to save this and then copy everything. Oh, actually, let's redo that and redo that as well. And then copy everything and go back to Turbo Intruder and then configure and send this attack. And again, duration is two seconds, three seconds. So uh, I'll speed this part up. Just a few seconds left, 60 seconds, 61. We're sending our request. So we get a trio to redirect again to our attack request that's expected. And then we get a trio to found as well for our smuggled request where we attempted to delete the user Carlos. So let's switch to the lab and then I'm gonna go to the front page. And if I refresh the page, yep, there you see, congratulations, you've solved the lab. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for watching.